Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What a blessing to come together this morning to worship our great God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Some folks didn't get up this morning. Amen. Amen. Some Amen. folks are on their beds of affliction. And we're mindful that there are many of you that are viewing on television somewhere around the world, somewhere here in California. But we're delighted that you've tuned in. I continue, we continue to keep you in prayer, those of you that are infirmed, and we're keeping those of you that are not infirm, but just like streaming, the Lord has commanded for us to come together right here at 1655 West Manchester Avenue in the great city of Los Angeles between the avenues of Western and Dinker. Minister Al Wilson, the associate minister here for the South Side of Church of Christ, and again, we're just delighted to be able to worship God in person, to look one another in the face, and not have to wear a mask unless we have a condition that dictates that. I'm going to ask that you bow and pray with me. Leading our singing this morning is none other than one of our elders, uh, Brother Henry. Uh, he's going to direct us in the song we're going to sing. And uh, Brother Joel, we want to keep him in prayer. He's out of town this morning. And uh, I thought I might be preaching and singing. But Brother Henry says, son, you don't have to do that. I'll, I'll sing. And I said, well, praise the Lord. All right, well, let's go to God in prayer. Most Holy Father, we are so thankful for all of your blessings. We're thankful, Lord, that we have an opportunity to interact with one another in person and even online. We're thankful for the technologies that you've blessed us with to allow streaming and being able to just share with one another. We thank you for the love that you've taught us to have for one another because you loved us first. Help us to bring glory, praise, and honor to you this day. May we have your favor, and in having your favor, Lord, we ask you to bless us with the favor of men. Forgive us of our sins. Cleanse us, Lord, from all unrighteousness, that all that we do may be pleasing. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us stand, we're saying, page 219. Let us all praise God. Amen. All day long of Jesus I am singing. He's my song of joy will ever be. Yeah. 
saying, we sang standard one and three. I want to be a soul winner for Jesus every day. He's done so much for me. I want to go in thus to give his erring way and be from bondage free. Scripture reading for this morning will be from 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. That's uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 1 through 10. And so it reads, Simon Peter, a bound servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who have obtained like precious faith with us by the righteousness of our God, and Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord, as this divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound you, will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. May the Lord bless the hearers and the doers of his word. And now let's please prepare our hearts and minds for prayer. Amen. 
please bow. Let's pray. Our God in heaven, thank you for another Lord's Day. Thank you for waking up this morning, and we thank you for all you have done for us. For every blessing, trial, and disappointment. Because we know that it was all meant to mold us into a person we are destined to be. Thank you for giving us strength, courage, and wisdom to face our present battles and, for, and the ones ahead. We love you, Lord, because you love us first and for not leaving our side. We know that thank you is not enough, Lord, but, but please accept our humble player, prayer and praises to you. We pray for those who attempt to work against us, attempt to bring us down, that their soul will be saved and they would come to full understanding. So please, Lord, help us clear our minds today so we can have a better understanding of your words. And for all the glory and honor of your name, in Jesus' name we pray, in the church say, Amen. amen. Turn your seven books to 111. We that love the Lord. Anybody here love the Lord? Yeah. Let's sing like we love it. Come we that love the Lord and let our joys be known. Join in a song with sweet accord. Join in a song with sweet accord.
income, those of us that are broke, amen, those of us uh, that have good jobs and money in our pocket, listen, the Lord, based upon the context that I'm going to share with you in just a moment, uh, is not just concerned about our dollars and cents. From 2 Corinthians, the 8th chapter, we see Paul giving an example of how the church at Corinth is being encouraged to give based upon his fellowship with the churches there in Macedonia. He says, moreover, brethren, verse 1, moreover, brethren, we do you to wit, I want you to know, the grace of God bestowed upon the churches of Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction, the abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. Simply put, they didn't have it to give, but they dug deep and gave anyway because they understood why it was needed for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, for to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power they were willing of themselves to give. He continues, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. What a beautiful spirit, what a beautiful understanding of what it means to give back to the Lord. In giving back to the Lord, what we are doing is we are helping people, amen. We are ministering in the communities in which we live. We keep these lights going, amen. We keep things going on in ministry that help people to come to a right relationship with God. The literature that we put out, that costs money. Uh, again, the, the air or heating that we feel, that costs money. Yes, and even my salary. I'm, this is the first job I ever had where I had to pay back. I don't think about it as paying, but I think about it making a contribution to the work of the Lord. Amen. These people gave first of themselves. Amen. You can't give what you don't have, but some of us are not good stewards of that which we have. If we have the mind to give, we will first give of our time. We will use our gifts, our talents, and the resources that the Lord has blessed us with. And when you have that mindset, it won't be a problem opening up your purse or your wallet. As I said, I know some are on fixed budgets, but the Lord is not asking for what you don't have. He's asking us to do the best that we can. Amen? Amen. Here's a principle of sowing and reaping in the ninth chapter, verse 6. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly, and he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man, according as he purposed in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves what kind of giver? He loves a cheerful giver. This ought to be one of those high points in our service when we are able to give back to God for the sake of the work. And God is able. You believe that? God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may abound in every good work. It's the Lord's intention that we be faithful unto him and obedient, that the work might go on. The ushers will come and serve you right now. Onward rejoicing, I tread life's way, higher and higher each passing day. 
Again, we say thank you. We thank you for all of your blessings that you lavish upon us. We thank you for answering our prayers, Lord. We have never come short in terms of being able to carry out the work that you've given us to do. We're excited, Lord, uh, that even the funds that we're collecting now have been done for many years and are blessing this community and that we have the Serenity House almost coming to completion. We thank you for those that have organized this effort. We thank you for the vision of Brother Bacchus. And Lord, we're just thankful to see it coming to pass. Yes. Lord, we thank you for uh, Brother Bacchus and he teaching us how to give back and, and allow ourselves to be used by you. Help us to learn these lessons from your word that we can bless a whole lot more souls, Lord. We can bless our youth. We can bless our seniors. We can bless our community. We thank you, Lord, for blessing us this day and every day. For it's in Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. She said, Daddy, that song's been in my head, but I've been hearing your voice Sing it. <clears throat> Three forty four. See what we can do together? <laughs> <laughs> we can do it. We can do it. Amen. We can. That's not it's two forty three. Forty three. Two forty three. If you want to sing along with us. I hope you do. Some of you just know it by heart. If you haven't, let us together sing. If for the price we have striven, after our labors are over, rest to our souls will be given. No show. Jesus is 
attention to the book of 2 Peter, and we will consider uh, a couple of verses from those uh, 10 that you've already heard. As I look to the back of the audience, I see my brother Tommy Williams. Tommy, it is so good to see you this morning. God bless you, brother. You know we love you. Amen. Amen. And you got your partner in crime right there next to you, Sister Rebecca Moore. Good soldier for the Lord. And then, glad to see, I know I'm going to get myself in trouble, but I'm glad to see Gloria Hamilton back in the service this morning. She's been going through it, and the Lord has blessed her to be with us. And then we have some of our friends from the community. We went out and knocked on doors, and our sister, our, our new sister in Christ, uh, Darinae Johnson. It's Johnson, right? Okay. Yeah, Amen. Darren Nate was here like a good fighting soldier yesterday and went out with us to pass out some of the information about our congregation, the things that are going on here, information about other churches of Christ here in the Los Angeles County. And, and look and behold, got children, little itty bitties here, uh, got her neighbor here, got her sister, right? Yes, amen. Well, we got the crew here. That's what I'm talking about. And hopefully before we get to the end of our lesson, we'll all be more inspired to step up our game in terms of reaching out to those that do not know Jesus Christ in the pardoning of their sins. Now, if you have your Bibles, amen, I don't care if it's a digital format of the Bible or whether it is a hard copy like I'm holding right here, turn it over to 2 Peter, and the chapter is 1. Peter says, or Simon Peter, a servant of an a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. According as his divine power hath given unto us not some things, but all things that pertain unto life and godliness. How? Through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by them we might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue, knowledge, and to knowledge, temperance, and to temperance, patience, and to godliness, and patience, uh, godliness, and to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful of the Lord, in the work of the Lord. But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. I want us to zero in on verse number 10 once again. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. I've titled our lesson this morning, Make Your Calling and Election Sure. Let me ask you a question. Are you sure that you're saved this morning? Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You, you got to be sure. You need to know that you know that you know that you know. 
In, in terms of background, we have to just go back and look at the letter that Peter first wrote to the same group of people that he's addressing here in the second letter. In that first letter, he is dealing with some of the same topics and subjects, but he was dealing with them in terms of trying to help them to be on guard for uh, these folks that are out there trying to come in against you. They're, they're persecuting the church. The church had experienced good growth and good pro uh, progress from the time that the day of Pentecost, since the Holy Spirit had come upon those apostles back there in A.D. 33, all the way up to about A.D. 60, amen. It had been experienced in this growth, and, and people were just loving the church of Jesus Christ because that environment that they were in, people were just debased. They were lewd. They didn't care about their fellow men in terms of their general interaction. It was all about me, myself, and I. In the early 60s, they began to experience increased persecution. And one of the main characters behind this increased persecution was a man by the name of Nero. Amen. He was adopted into the uh, household of Julius Caesar. And, and Julius was pretty tough himself. But uh, Nero, his daddy was a tyrant. His daddy was super wicked and super evil. I'm telling you, folks, our kids are like sponges. They soak up everything that they see us do, everything they hear. They go to the school, come home cursing. Don't hear curse words at home, but they come home using profanity because they're just like sponges, and many of them are still in their formative ages when they're going through all of that kind of stuff. This boy grew up learning bad habits. His mother also wanted to see to the throne. Amen. And so she was just kind of hanging out. She didn't care too much for her adopted son, but uh, she was thinking more about the throne and kind of waiting on daddy to pass because she wanted to get to it. So what Nero did is killed his mama. Amen. Amen. Talk about persecution. They were persecuting one another within their own household. But Nero found himself in some financial troubles, and, and he decided that he was going to try to de defer attention off himself and it's said by the historians that he is the one that had Rome burned up about half of Rome was burned to the ground but you know what he did then he shifted the blame to Christians amen so as to take the heat off of himself the kind of persecution that they were suffering is that they would take the the dead bodies of animal and sow it into the flesh of, of the saints and then throw them in the middle of an arena and throw in wild dogs and other beastly type animals to eat them alive as sport for the audience. The man was messed up. He would crucify folks and then put the, the crosses in his garden and then uh, cover them with tar and all and then set them on fire and say that they are the light of the world and they're lighting his garden. What a morbid way of thinking. So with that kind of persecution going on, you had Christians that did not know whether they should stand and fight, stand on the word of God, or whether or not they should hightail it out of town. Amen. Some of us want to do some of that kind of stuff now. You know, some of us want our uh, uh, concealed weapons license. Amen. Well, maybe not y'all, but uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, folks are foolish out here. Better armed than our law enforcement folks. They don't have any license. Amen. They're going crazy out there. And we are law-abiding citizens. You got folks that's just driving crazy and having road rage. Uh, you having men raping their little daughters. Amen. Read it. O open up the newspaper. Look at the news. Amen. And I got even better sources. Some of this evil is going on. People are being persecuted. The question is, if somebody came in here and said, all of you that are true Christians, uh, get out of here or so I'm going to shoot up everybody. 
How many of y'all would leave? I'd be up here all by myself, I think. <laughs> Sometimes we don't know what we'll do in the face of fear. But the best thing to do is be prepared. And that's what Peter was trying to get uh, the church to do. This persecution was great upon the people of God. I just got three points for you this morning because I only got a few minutes left. Uh, the first one is make your calling and election sure. Number two, God gives us everything we need. And then closing out, if you do these things, and we're going to identify those things that we need to do. First of all, at verse number 10, he said, make your calling and your election sure. I need y'all to stay with me, folks, because uh, the book that we're in now, the letter that we're looking at, is 2 Peter. Now, there is a difference in 2 Peter and 1 Peter. Same author, a lot of the same issues that they were dealing with. It's still persecution, but instead of the persecution coming from the outside, you got persecution on the inside. Paul talked about this. He said they're going to come in among us as grievous wolves to take away, to draw away the saints unto themselves. John said if they were ever with us, they would not have left us. In other words, they came in under the radar. Jude says they privily came in. They came in secretly under the radar because they did not want the, the saints to know and pick up on the fact that they were coming in to bring harm upon the church. But I thank God for Peter. Peter being as bold and brazen as he was, the Lord smoothed those edges out and, and blessed him to know how to be tactful and communicate and appreciate uh, what Christ had instilled in him so he could in turn build God's people up. And so as we look at this book, he's letting us know that the people of God can make it. Amen. Look at what he says here in the first, keep, keep your finger there at first, second Peter, that first chapter, and turn real quick over to uh, first Peter and verse number one. Peter, an apostle of Jesus, to the strangers scattered throughout, uh, scattered throughout, who are sojourners of the dispersion. Uh, they come from Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia and Bithynia. He says, elect according to the foreknowledge of God, the Father, through sanctification of the Spirit and obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied unto you. Even to, in his first letter, he's letting them know God has your back. You come from different backgrounds, but one thing we all had in common is that we are part of the elect. We are part of those that were handpicked by the Lord God our Father. Now I know some of you hear me say something like that and the first thing that may come to your mind is predestination or Calvinism doctrine. Listen, that Calvinistic doctrine is a damnable doctrine. It's destructive. It's a doctrine that says predestination is where God picked you to be saved and you not to be saved and you not to be saved, but you, 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 and you're going to be saved. That's not what predestination is. Predestination, as we read about it in Ephesians, the first chapter, is where God predetermines who will be saved. In this sense, it's predetermined, and it was predetermined before the world was created. Amen. That predetermination is within the realm of the will of God. Imagine this being the circle of God's will. And inside of this circle is God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the written word of God, and the church of Jesus Christ. If a person wants to be saved and have an eternal relationship with God, they're going to have to abide by the rules and the order 
of God the Father, God the Son, amen, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. God has made it very clear through his Son what is required for one's salvation. Peter understood that he had to communicate that we need to make sure that our calling and election is certain. Do we know that we know that we know that we know we're saved? Or are we sometimes guessing about whether or not we're right with God? When things seem to go sideways and things are not working out for us as we think they should, do we start to doubt the faith that we thought we had? Amen. And wonder, are we really, truly saved? Well, Peter addresses all of this and he tells us how we can know. Go back now to 2 Peter, that first chapter. Back in 2 Peter, that first chapter, he says in verse 10, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. When he says, uh, brethren, give diligence, he's saying we need to be attentive and, and make haste and be in a hurry to do what God says do. And God says, do what? Make your calling sure. What is the calling? The calling is the invitation that Christ has extended to those that desire to be saved. How does that calling come? It comes in the form of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Why is it called the gospel? Because it's good news. It's good news about Christ's death, his burial and resurrection and the sacrifice that he made for you and me so that he can lay down his life, amen, and raise up again and now sit at the right hand of the Father in glory. Jesus Christ made that sacrifice so that we could be saved. Some are being confused by denominationalism. Some people are being confused by a lot of the different doctrines that are out there in the world. In our class this morning, we shared from 2 John, that ninth verse, and it said, whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God Whosoever abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Hmm. Why is it that if I abide in the doctrine of Christ, then I have the Father and the Son? But if I don't abide in the doctrine of Christ, I don't have any. Well, number one, he said, whosoever. That means anybody. Your mama, your daddy, your preacher, it doesn't make any difference. Your sister, your brother, your husband, your wife, if they will not abide in the doctrine, in the teaching, that's what doctrine is. If they don't abide, if they don't remain in the doctrine of Christ, they have not got. Now to abide in the thing, you have to get in it first, amen. If I were going to abide in this suit, I had to first put it on, amen. You have to put Christ Jesus on in baptism to have your sins washed away. But if you don't understand why you're being baptized and you're just going down dry and coming up wet. We need to make sure that our calling and election is sure. Amen. Our calling has been dictated by God himself. In John the 17th chapter, in verse number 5, Peter and James and John were up on the holy mount with Jesus and Moses and Elijah and Peter just gets all excited about being up there. You know, they part of Jesus in a circle, and they get up there on the top of that mountain. And, and, I, and this is just my imagination of how Peter said it. He said, uh, Lord, it's good for us to be here. That's how most of us would read that text. But you got to realize, Moses and Elijah had been dead, gone a long time. Amen. Elijah was taken up, but Moses was dead. Amen. Uh, and now he sees these guys alive. How do you know that it was Moses and Elijah? They knew the scriptures. Amen. They heard the conversation between Jesus, Moses, and Elijah. Peter, James, and John observing this here coming together of these great men of the Bible. I imagine Peter, when he said, 
Lord, if it's all right with you, let us build here three tabernacles. I don't think he said it like that. <laughs> My vivid imagination uh, said, Lord, it's good for us to be here. I mean, he excited. I'd be excited. He sees Jesus transform right there before their very eyes. His clothes become white as the sun. Everything just changes. Amen. It's good for us to be here. Mm -hmm. He said, let us build for you three tabernacles. Now, a tabernacle could be a memorial. It could be a tent for sleeping in. Or it could be a place of worship. If you do a logical deduction here, Peter's talking about a place of worship. We got to make sure our calling and election is sure and not lean to the doctrine and teachings of men. Peter said, Lord, let us build here three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He's making an indecent proposal to the Lord Jesus Christ. That was the 17th chapter of Matthew, but in the 16th chapter, Jesus had just said, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail or overtake not them, but it. He was speaking in terms of a singular church. He used a possessive pronoun saying, my church. I will build. It had not been built yet. He was speaking future tense. I will build my church. And the gates of hell. There's a whole lot of gates to get you in hell. Ain't hey, but one going to get you into heaven. Amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So Peter had heard Jesus said that he was building his church, his place of worship, but now he introduces an indecent proposal. Lord, let us build here three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. Well, if he was talking about a place to sleep in overnight, a tent, if he was talking about just a place to have a memorial, listen, he's been talking about six. Amen. What he's doing in making this proposition is he's making Moses and Elijah equal with Jesus Christ. How are you going to make the created equal with the creator? Moses and Elijah were created by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by the will of God. Oh, you don't believe it? In Hebrews, the first chapter, it tells us all things were made by him. Amen. Amen. Why? Because he is the image of God. He is the icon of God. Y'all looking at me funny. Some of y'all old enough to know what a typewriter is, don't you? <laughs> Amen. Y'all remember how uh, when you would type on it, the typewriter had the arms, and it had an ink ribbon in there, and you strike the key, and it would slap that, that ribbon, and, and that ribbon would transfer the ink to your paper, and the image that came up on the paper was the image on that arm that struck it. It only projected what that letter was or that image that was on that key. Jesus came here in high definition as the image of the living God, God the Son. Amen, somebody. I thought y'all be wanting to shout right about now. I ain't going to preach long. I just got a few more minutes. But I want you to understand. Peter wants us to understand that we need to make our calling election sure. Then we see the cloud overcover all of them. Moses and Elijah are gone and the only one that remains is Jesus Christ. And the voice from heaven, you know whose voice that was, don't you? This is my beloved son and whom I am not just pleased with. I am well pleased with him. One translation King James said, hear ye him. Several others say, listen to him. Other translations say, obey him. God is saying, this is my son. 
do what he said do. Even his mother understood that when he began his ministry. When they told him that he ran out of wine at the wedding. Amen. Well, what is that? What do I have to do with you about this here? And he wasn't being disrespectful, but what did he do? <laughs> he told him to go get those barrels, fill them up with water, and now the king, he mad because he drunk. <laughs> Amen. All, he said, now you're going to break out the good wine. <laughs> now you break out the good wine. But when he told his mother to tell him what to do, look what happened. She said, whatever he says, do it. And she did it. You and I ought to have that same attitude. Whatever he says, just do it. That's what Nike say. Just do it. And we go out there and spend all that money on their gear. Tennis shoes, shirts, caps, sweats, all that kind of thing. We just do it. Don't even think about it. You go and fill a prescription, can't read what that prescription said. You just do it. Amen. Go in the restaurant, you don't know how many times they drop their piece of meat on the floor and they bring it out there with some garnish on it. And you just, you just do it, amen. You better be praying over that stuff, amen. He wanted to make sure that we understood what the invitation is. Because there's only one invitation that's going to get you into heaven. And that is the gospel about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says, your election, look at verse 10 again. I'm just going to have to stop, y'all. Somebody else's bell is ringing on me. <laughs> Wherefore, rather, brethren, verse 10 of 2 Peter, give diligence to make your calling, your gospel invitation, watch this, and your election sure. What is an election? Come on, let's just use some common sense here. We got an election coming up, right? Amen. Amen. What are we doing in election? And when we vote, we're doing what? We're choosing, we're picking the candidate that we want. God has chosen us in the realm of the gospel. When we obey what God says, then God considers us as being the elected. And you and I are to show forth the praises of his glory. Amen. He's called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. We were blind and could not see. Wanted to go somewhere but didn't know how to get there. But thank God that he sent light into the world in the person of his dear son, Jesus Christ. Let me just skip over a whole bunch of stuff. He, lift, he listed seven virtues there that we need to keep, that we need to practice. By the grace of God, he says at verse number one, he says, Simon Peter, the servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that what? Have obtained like, uh, have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. You know what he's saying? All the saints got these blessings just like us. They got the same faith just like us. They got the same doctrine just like us. And it's because of the righteousness of God. Amen. There's none righteous in the world. No, not one. And those of us that are in the Lord's church having been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ is still through the blood that the Lord looks at us. Amen. Because if he looks at Al Wilson, all he sees is a wretched man. Amen. I'm but a filthy rag in the sight of the Lord. But he looks at me through the blood of his son. This is Al Wilson right here. This is Jesus. Got me covered in his blood. And in his blood, he sees me as being pure. He sees me as being holy. He sees me as being righteous. And I have to start seeing myself in that same way. I need to start evaluating whether or not my calling and my election is certain. He tells us how we can be sure. He says in verse 2, grace and peace be multiplied unto you how? 
through the knowledge of God and Jesus our Lord. Through the knowledge, amen. He's talking about accurate and complete knowledge. Do you remember in Romans, the 10th chapter, Peter is preaching, or rather Paul is preaching the gospel. And Paul says at verse number one, brethren, my heart's desire and my prayer for Israel is that they might be saved. The inference is, is that because of their rejection of Jesus Christ, they are not saved. But he didn't just say he has a desire for them to be saved. He took action. He said, my heart's desire and prayer. He knows the God of heaven, the God of righteousness, the God that's holy, the God that's long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. He knows that if these people hear the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ, if they come to him with an honest heart, he is faithful and just to cleanse them from all their unrighteousness through the blood of his dear son. He says, grace, peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of, our, uh, of God and of Jesus Christ. How? According as his divine power hath given unto us, not some things, not most things, not a few things, but has given unto us all things. I like that. That pertain to life, that spiritual life and godliness. How? Through, there it is again, through the knowledge of him that has called us, that has invited us, amen, that has invited us to glory and virtue. You mean to tell me God blesses those that he calls and those that respond to him to share in his glory? The first thing that comes to our mind, he's too holy. He's too righteous. And that's the attitude that we need to have. He's worthy of all the praise that we give on him. Amen. But if he call you, we need to listen. We need to answer. We need to obey. When we take in consideration of 2 Thessalonians, listen to what Paul says there in 2 Thessalonians, that second chapter and verse number 14. And here it comes. There it is. Here we go. In verse number 13 of the second chapter, he says, But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord. Why, Paul? Because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. Well, what is truth? Jesus said, you shall know the truth, John 8 and 32, and the truth shall make you free. What is truth? John said in John the first chapter, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Verse 14 says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Who is truth? Jesus is truth. Jesus is reality. I'm a black man. That's reality. Y'all didn't hear that, did you? I'm a black man. Y'all didn't hear me. These people are confused nowadays. They don't know what they are. I said, I'm a black man. That's a reality. I said, I'm a man. All some folks got to do is look down. Men and women. This neutral gender stuff. Nowhere in the Bible. Listen, we have to love people. I don't care what walk of life they come from. I'm not knocking folks because 
of what they're doing right now because they believe what they believe as much as we believe what we believe, but what they believe does not make it right if the Bible speaks against it. Amen. And what we ought to do is communicate to people in love. You treat people just like you would treat your children. Amen. Be kind and loving. Try to meet people where they are. You'd be surprised how many people really want to know the Lord have a relationship with the Lord, be blessed by the Lord. All we got to do is take our time and get to know people, develop relationships with people. And then people will let their guards down and listen. Amen. They hear so much mess and junk out there. Yes. But as you and I are making our calling and election sure and fulfilling these seven virtues that I ain't got time to go through, you're going to have to read them for yourself, amen. Uh, but go through there and look at them. He said, the closing part of our lesson is, go back to, um, oh, I didn't finish this here one. <laughs> I'm sorry, verse 14. He said, where unto he called you, that is the truth, he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. I think that's pretty good that the Lord would extend that kind of favor to us. In closing, at verse number 10 and 11 of 2 Peter, the first chapter. Peter says, Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. If ye do these things, he enumerates those seven virtues, adding those things to your faith. Why? Because without faith, we cannot please God. It's impossible to please God for you. He that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. What are we going to get faith from? Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Don't just listen to what some man or some woman says, or some mess that somebody has written down on a track. Verify it with the word of God. you got to be taught right to believe right. you got to believe right to obey right. You gotta obey right to be saved right. Yeah. And you gotta be saved right to end up in the right place. Yeah. Amen. And you will not be able to step up on that cloud with the Lord when he comes back. And God forbid that you die before he comes back. Because we're in the dressing room of life right now. This is the dressing room preparing us for eternity. Once we cross over to the other side, once this lump of clay returns to the earth from whence it came, the spirit will return to God who gave it. So now's the time to get ready. You know what? We got water right there. The water's ready. The baptizer's ready. We got the clothes ready. The angels are ready. God is ready. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God? Believe that with all of your heart. Amen. If you believe that with all of your heart, then it should cause you to want to have a change of mind. That's called repentance. And except you repent, Jesus said, you shall likewise perish. We need to confess Jesus Christ as being the Son of God. Confession in and of itself will not save you. Amen. We have to confess, acknowledge Jesus Christ as God's Son. Jesus said, he that uh, rejected me and received me, not, no, I'm getting that all mixed up. bottom line, here's what the sense of it is. If you reject Jesus Christ, if you do not acknowledge him as being who God said he is, if you do not recognize him as being God's son, his only son, and receive what it is that he said we must do in order to be saved, then we cannot be saved. Amen. Jesus said in Mark 16 and 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. We see that happen in the book of Acts on the first day that the church was established, on the day of Pentecost. Those people asked, Peter, men and brethren, what shall we do? They had already heard the word. They had believed the word. Peter said to them at that point, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 
Can't nobody lay their hands on you and you receive the Holy Spirit. Won't find that in the Bible. What you will find is there were individuals that the apostles laid their hands on. But not in this day and age. Read 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now by the faith, hope, and charity. Those three, but the greatest of those is love. We need to accept the love of God and the invitation that he has extended to us. Perhaps you want to be baptized this morning for the remission of your sins. We'll ask you a simple question. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God? And we'll baptize you into Christ Jesus, having made sure that you understand what you're doing. Because we don't want you to just go down dry and come up wet. Amen. It must be by faith. Perhaps you have a prayer request. We can make those requests known this morning. If you did not receive one of the slips, you can come up and the brethren will give you a slip. You can fill it out and we will honor your request and pray for you. We bid you to come as together we stand and sing the Savior's invitation. There's not a friend like the Holy Jesus. Oh. Sister Belinda Henderson is asking us to continue to keep the Henderson uh, family in prayer in the passing of our brother, her husband, Elry Henderson. Uh, Belinda, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Melba Kidd is asking us to pray uh, for her brother and sister, uh, for brother and sister high. She fell and hit her head. Oh, Lord. Darren A. Johnson, one of our uh, new converts, uh, she is thankful for her blessing and uh, praying for healing and praying for a better understanding of God's word. Uh, Darren A., if you just apply yourself to the word of God, it's coming, it's coming. And the way that you were working out there in the community yesterday, you are a fast learner and your sincerity of heart, uh, I appreciate it very much. God bless you. Asher Cox, is also uh, asking uh, for prayer for healing. She needs employment, weakness to overcome, but in all of that, she says that she is thankful for her blessings. Uh, Ashley, uh, just see me afterwards, and we'll have that conversation that you want to have that you wrote on the sheet here. Amen. Uh, Jenny Gafford is also asking for prayers for all of her problems. Continue to keep Sister Cheryl Fowler in prayer. She's healing 
and the family uh, is well. So let's continue to pray for them. Latessa Matkins is asking just for prayers in general and in particular for a friend uh, who is going through some uh, business matters and just needs prayer also for her family. Amen. Sister Alberta Kegler informs us that Ramona is going to have a, a, a minor surgery. And people say minor surgery. Surgery, surgery. Amen. Uh, surgery on this Friday. So we want to be uh, praying for Ramona. Uh, Sister Jack, Jackie Dixon expresses her gratitude saying thank you for all of my blessings. Uh, Andrew Fowler, please continue to pray for the Fowler and the Gafford family. Margaret Thomas is asking uh, for prayer and, and thank, saying that she is thankful for her blessings. Thank you for your prayers for my neighbor, Faye. She's doing better. Keep her in your prayers. Brendalyn Brooks is asking prayers for a friend. Uh, this close friend, Louis Starks, for his mother, is in the hospital, sent her home, or was in the hospital, and uh, sent her home gagging. They couldn't do any more for her uh, and Palmer. So let's pray for the Palmer family. And Barbara Knox acknowledges that she has sinned, that she's erred, and is asking us to pray with her, uh, that God bless her, pray for her son, uh, who's healing and restoration for all uh, their needs to be met. Will you go to God in prayer with me at this time? Our Father, once again, we say thank you. May we always express our appreciation for your majesty, for your graciousness towards us. Thank you for extending favor to your people, blessing us with another opportunity to share love with this community, with one another. You've taught us, Lord, that by love we have for one another, all men will know that we are your disciples. Help us to love each other more and more. Help our families to become stronger. Lord, we're thankful that even before you heard the request that we read, your eyes over the righteous and your ears open unto all our prayers. We thank you for that. We are praying, Father, also for those that are teetering on making a decision whether or not they will obey you. Lord, may they realize that the only thing that's trying to keep them from obeying your word is that old devil. He's a deceiver. He's been a liar from the very beginning. And we thank you, Father, that your word has taught us that. And if we just uh, bring ourselves under your authority, resist that devil, he will flee from us. Yes. We thank you for the indwelling of your Holy Spirit in your children. Forgive us of our sins, lest we come short of your blessings. For we ask these and all blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. Amen. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand, I am tired, I am
institute, the institution of the Lord's Supper, right there in Matthew 26, 26. And then we run over to 1 Corinthians 11, and around about 26 and 23, we find where he says, do this to the church. Somebody ought to be shouting in here. He said, do this in remembrance of me. When you eat this bread and take this cup, do this in remembrance of me. And I'm reminded of the time that he's, that the Bible gives an example of time. Right there in the book of Acts, 20 and 7. I remember I was out eating breakfast one morning, out of town, and I had an extra communion cup in my uh, pocket. And I set it on the breakfast table and some girl said, is this the first Sunday? Where'd she get that from? I don't know. But it's not in the Bible. You do not take the Lord's Supper on the first Sunday. You take it every Sunday. Look at Acts 20 and verse 7. It says, on the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread. That's what it said. And she said she thought it was the first day of the week because I pulled a communion cup out my pocket. And some churches take it upon the, uh, every six months. I'm telling you, you better read your Bible and check this stuff when you go to these church and you taking communion and all this stuff. It's not in the Bible. Amen. Set up on the first day of the week when you come together to break bread. So today is the first day of the week. And Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. And that's what we're going to do here. Amen. Let us give God thanks for this bread. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this bread, your son's precious body. And Father, we come today to remember him because he's done so much for us. And we thank you for him. And we ask you to bless this bread as we eat it. Let us eat this in the name of Jesus. Bible talks about this is what they call juice. We call it the blood. It wasn't juice that saved us. It was the blood of Jesus that saved us. The Bible says in Leviticus that there's life in the blood. And the blood of Jesus gives us eternal life. Somebody ought to be shouting in here. Knowing you're going to live forever. Life that has no ending for a believer. Amen. Amen. And the Bible said without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Let us give God thanks for this blood of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the precious blood of Jesus that makes us right and pure in your sight, Father. And we are so glad, Father, that when you look down on us, Father, we have a bloodline drawn around us, the blood of Jesus, your only begotten son. And we thank you, Father, thank you, Lord. for the sacrifice that was made on our behalf, knowing that he died, Father. But he got up out of the grave on the third day, never to die again. And we thank you, Father, for his death that gives us life after death, Father. We thank you for Jesus. In his name, amen. amen. Let us drink. Thank God for Jesus. Amen. Want to just remind those of you that came in late, you did not have an opportunity to give your offering that uh, you will see the ushers as you are exiting. Uh, they will take care of that for you. I know you don't want to miss out on blessing the Lord and having the Lord bless you. Amen. I have several guest cards this morning and on these here sheets like this, the blue and white sheets. 
If you did not get an opportunity to complete one of these, we would like for you to do so before you leave. Uh, we have a lot of different information out there in the foyer that helps you to better understand who we are. And if you have any questions about anything that you have experienced, I promise you, I will stay after. Jeff will stay after. Brother Henry will stay after. We will stay after and answer your Bible questions with the Bible. Amen. And if we don't know, we'll say, I don't know. Right. But if you have questions about salvation, we will stick here with you as long as it takes for you to have an understanding. All right. I have uh, a guest card from Michael Smith this morning. Michael, where are you? All right. Good to have you with us this morning, Michael. God bless you. And Ashley Cox. Ashley was in our, my class this morning. Praise the Lord. Good to have you with us, Ashley. Tammy Humphrey. Where are you, Tammy? Maybe she had to leave. Uh, Teresa Salon. All right. All right. Another student in the class this morning. Lisa Anderson. Lisa Anderson. Okay, well, have I overlooked anyone that I perhaps didn't have a card for? If you're visiting with us for the first time, just raise your hand. Okay, sir, it's good to have you with us this morning. All right, God bless you. You're always welcome to come to the Southside Church of Christ. We try to show ourselves to be friendly, but more than that, this is a loving congregation. We are going to want to remind you that on tomorrow that we will have the viewing for Brother Elroy Henderson. It will be at the Inglewood Park Mortuary from noon to 4 p.m. and then Tuesday the 5th, there will be a viewing that begins at 11 a.m. and will conclude at 11.20 and the actual service will begin at 11.30. Uh, if you would like to give a um, condolence to the family, Please see Sister, uh, I'm bad as well, Sister Henderson, Sister Henderson, raise your hand back there, honey. Belinda, Sister Belinda Henderson, amen. Um, we received sad news uh, last week that uh, Sister Fanita James passed, and uh, we have been in contact with the family, but we still don't have the services finalized. As soon as we get that information, we will pass it on to you. So keep the James family and all the bereaved families in prayer. We've had just three within the last month from this congregation. So we're going to ask that you pray with us. Uh, Brother Mark Sanchez will come at this time and give the benediction. And uh, for those of you that, uh, again, want to see me I'll be in the foyer following our dismissal. Mark. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your holy name. We were gathered here once again in your name, Lord. Not because we want to, but because you enabled us to. Enabled us to wake up and move this morning to fulfill our duty as Christians and to fulfill your commandment. Lord, we are at your feet asking for your mercy and forgiveness, asking for you to hear us in our prayers. Help us examine ourselves in a way that we see our faults and flaws and not deceive our own self before we look at others and judge them. Lord, make us worthy of your name. Make us carry ourselves in a way that is pleasing in your sight. Make us be the light that you need us to be for people that are lost to follow. We ask for your continued forgiveness for the sins that we've done, for the sins that we are doing, and for the sins that we will do. Lord, we thank you for everything, for the good and the bad things that had happened and will happen. Lord, we pray for the challenges that we are going through, the drought, the flood, and the storms in our lives. Let us never forget that you are the Lord, and let us never falter in our faith. Help us be still and know that you are God. We pray that you listen to all of our prayers, the things that we ask for, be it spoken and unspoken. Lord, you know what, it is in, what is in our hearts. You already know even if we don't say it. And may all of these things be done in your will. Please give us your undying love, grace, mercy, and protection, not just every day, but every second of it. We ask all of these things in the holy and mighty name 
of your Son, Jesus Christ, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, for without Him we cannot go to you. Amen. Amen. And we that love the Lord and let our joy be known, join in a song with sweet accord, join in a song with sweet accord, and us around the throne, and us around the throne, we're marching to Zion, beautiful, beautiful Zion. Bless you.